Westcott, uh, CEO of Evergreen Brands, and this is uh, Dave Lundquist, better known as Pastor Dave. <laughs> Pastor Dave. That's right. And we are here uh, to talk about uh, one of the things that we do at Evergreen Brands, which is our nonprofit called Embridge. And it doesn't get a whole bunch of limelight, but it should get more. Because it's the... Hey, I would love to see it get more. It, I think it'd be the, great to uh, get a little jewel. publicity. Yeah. Yeah. It's what do you mean by Crown Jewel? By Crown Jewel. Are you interviewing me? I, you know what? I'm I just thought you thought that I'm was a great teasing. question. I'm just I mean, I'm just most people would have teasing. passed right by that, but I know we what like to have fun. What do you mean? We like to have fun on the call. <laughs> so uh, Crown Jewel, um, to me, is that you know business can be kind of tough sometimes. Yeah. It can be kind of hard. It can be kind of hard to, you know, things don't always go your way. Like, uh, you know, for example, today, in all truth and honesty, you know, I've got a good employee who's going to be going back to college, hmm. who's going to be taking a different career path. Yeah. And, you know, that happens, right? But yeah. when those kind of things happen, when you get those kind of, you know, disappointments, how do you, how do you allow that to run your business? How do you allow that to function? How does that, how does that impact you? Tough to find that person to replace They're tough, them. right? Yeah. They can be tough to find. Yeah. They can be tough to. But when you've been doing it for you know, just about two decades, you've seen hundreds of people come through the doors. And that's okay. But the point is that you know, when you have that you know, issue come up, it's okay. Because one, it's all in God's hands anyway. Right, number one, it's okay. Everything's meant to happen for a reason. Two, everything in life has an expiration date, no matter what it is. Three, we're going to be super thankful for it. And four, uh, the crown jewel aspect is that uh, you have something bigger to think about, something yeah. bigger that says you know it's okay I and recall. it's going to be good. Because when you have those moments that are difficult or disappointing or frustrating or whatever it might be, you look back and you say. Oh man, that's awesome. Just this morning, Dave shared with me a picture of a guy, I think in Nepal, right? Yeah, Nepal. In Nepal. And he needed a kidney transplant. Transplant, And we donated the lion's sum of the share to enable that to happen. And so we saw the picture and, you know, some email there about the impact that we were able to make in one person's life. And if you can imagine... What would it be like to change one person's life? What is it to change hundreds of people's of lives? And so I often think, what's the point to keep working? What's the point to keep working, you know, this hard? And it always comes back to something really simple. Yeah. Let's change the world. Let's make the world a better place. And it's just, you know, I that's can guarantee what is, you that, that guy in Nepal, when he received that, the funds to be able to get his transplant, I mean, it's life changing for him. Yeah. I mean, it's literally life changing. Yeah. You know, for us, I mean, we can look at it and go, well, that was, that was really cool that we get to do that. But he will never forget. No, he won't. His life will all, always be altered. Just because, man, there was a business in Monroe, Washington that said, yeah, I'm willing to, I'm willing to give. Invest, right? Yeah. We're investing yeah. not only in people, but in kingdom work and in, in everything that we do. 90% of the things that we give to are Christian related because... That's how I believe. But we also have a cool story with this, uh, with this same uh, group uh, last year during COVID. I think it was last year where they, we about delivered a year and a half now. about a year and a half where we delivered the food. And yeah, there, we, was, uh, a, there was a, a, a monsoon flood and half this village got wiped out. And literally they were stranded because they were pretty high up in the Himalayas. They got stranded. The road got uh, washed out. The town got washed out. Uh, only half of the, the uh, houses were still there and no food was able to get in. And, you know, luckily we had a partner there who told us about it and said, hey, we have, we have a way to be able to get in. And they literally had to hike in four hours um, with 50 pound uh, rice sacks on their back. Uh, but they were able to get it in and again, be able to help not just, I think it was almost 200 people and wow. we were able to feed for, um, you know, the weeks that it took until they were able to repair the road and, again, reestablish things. So, yeah, really, really we cool that save, we do We that. helped save those lives. Yeah, literally. Yeah. In that, in that uh, yeah, tough Yeah, kids part going of the hungry, world, right? Can you imagine if you're a parent with a child and you have no food 
and then all of a sudden, you know, guys come hiking in with, uh, yeah. you know, sacks of, sacks of rice on their that back. That really puts it in perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I How do you people. feed your kids? That's a huge, that's a huge deal. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. And we take it so for granted, right? We can go to the grocery store and we've got aisles yeah. of whatever we want. Yeah. And they're just saying, hey, we need some rice. Need something. Just give us some rice, right? And we were able to make those changes. So that's part of what Embridge is, you know, all about. And uh, we fund Embridge primarily through the work that we do at uh, Trans Blue and the Trans Blue Franchise Company. And it's interesting how we started because uh, when Dave and I hooked up, I think that we were given to about 135 different organizations, and we were. It was kind of a rough shotgun approach. You know, we didn't know how they were using the funds, what they were really doing. It was like, oh, well, twenty dollars here, twenty dollars there. Yeah. I mean, it's great for an organization to have those kind of donors because they, you know, that's kind of a steady income stream. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you're going to come back and you really want to be able to share with your people, your company, um, it really, I mean, if you can whittle that down to 20 or 10, you know, yeah. and be able to say, this is that, you know, this is what, this is how we gave some money, you right. know, this is how it changed lives. Pretty powerful for your employees, pretty powerful. You can see the impact. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I think, um, you know, sometimes bigger isn't better, you know, and especially when you're doing good. Uh, and you're giving to organizations, sometimes those grassroots organizations make the biggest impact uh, for the dollars that you give. Because, you know, they're, they're right there. They're, they're excited to be able to do the help. That's what they, you know, that was yeah. their life goal was to be able to help people. And then when you come alongside of them so that they can accomplish their goal, man, it's great for them. It's great for the people. You've got relationship. And it's not just it's a large exciting. organization. Yeah, it is. And you live that every day. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun to be able to get emails like the one we got from, you know, Jit Lama, you know, from Nepal uh, and be able to see that. Plus, you know, he just reported to me just this is one story of many. Um, uh, we've been helping an after school program where uh, some kids that were, you know, marginalized because of society uh, didn't have educational opportunities. And so we were able to start an after-school program to help them in their schoolwork, and he just sent me an email, and we, we help about 20 to 25 kids, and he said every single one of them passed their, their tests. They were some of the top in their class wow. because of that extra help with that after-school program. And these were kids that, unfortunately, were marginalized by their society, and now they're excelling, you know, because they got the help, yeah. you know, and were able to help them, so pretty cool. One of the things you're a proponent of is uh, business is doing good is good for business. Yeah, that's one of the that's one of the taglines you use. I totally believe that because you know when you can show your employees, you know this is that this is what we're doing. Um, it gives them a motivation to do their work. I mean, it's great for me to be able to send out emails to the Transflu franchises. Hey, this is what we were able to do. It's great for those employees to be able to go, hey, I'm not just, you know, lining my boss's pockets here, but we're actually making uh, an impact on this world. And the fun thing is that is something that they, you know, they get to share. Everybody loves to share a good story. Yeah. And, you know, they're able to go home, be able to say, hey, you know what we're doing at, you know, at my work? This is what we're doing. We just got this report. And it's, it's good. It's good morale builder. Yeah. It is pretty cool. It is great. So for the people listening who are in business or maybe not in business but like to give, what's a what's something you can share with them? What's a tip? How how would you get started in this? What is the first well, step? Well, you can always like? go through us. So embridge.global, you can check us out. Uh, you can give me a call and we can help you connect. Um, that would be great. So, I mean, yeah, use us. Um, we try to make our fees absolutely minimal, you know, credit card fees and those kind of things. But really, I think it is for you is to follow your passion. So no matter where you're at, if you have something that you're passionate about, um, do a little research and find out who in your community or who in the world is meeting, you know, that need and uh, do a little 
do a little uh, dig. So Navigator, um, uh, Charity Navigator is a great way to be able to get a little research on them, make sure that you know the funds are actually going to where they're going. Uh, Candid is another organization, GuideStar. You can use those uh, online tools to be able to check out an organization. And then, you know, uh, go call them up, talk to them. You know, do, do the face-to-face. -face. Um, you know, it's one thing just to look online, and everybody looks good online, unfortunately. Yeah. But when you actually talk to the, you know, to the director or to people at the organization, you get a heartbeat. And, you know, that's what I like to do. You know, I like to actually set up meetings, sit down with people, ask them the questions, because, you know, um, you get to know their heart. You get to know, you know, what excites them. And that way you can really, you know, maybe align your business with that. And then, you know, ask them, can I get information? Can I get uh, things to be able to share with my employees? And yeah, you get a personal email with personal photos. Man, that goes out to your email, to your totally. company business. And uh, that's how it goes. Do you have to have a lot of money to start giving back? No, no. I mean, it's just, especially overseas. I mean... You know, funds overseas, such a huge impact. It goes so much further. Uh, we were able to support, I mean, um, there are, there are uh, countries that are more difficult to make an impact in because they are restricted, what I call restricted access countries. Um, but even in those, man, you can make such an impact. We were uh, in one in um, Southeast Asia, I'll just say that. And uh, helping out uh, a young man put on uh, camps, sports camps, and they had 350, and it literally only cost us $200 a month over a period of months to be able to sponsor these sports camps right. and be able to bless these kids, um, kids that have never been to anything like that, and uh, yeah, so sometimes $200 a month can go a long way, a long way. So you, what you're saying is, I don't have to be rich to be able to give back and help change the world. I can do it a dollar at a time. Yeah, yeah. 35 cents feeds yeah. X yeah. amount of people. You yeah. can do it with a little bit of an impact. But I would encourage you to do your research. Yeah. You know, that there are a million charities out there. And while I'd love to say that 100% of them are, are all great, um, there are charities that I wouldn't give to. You know, yeah. I hate to say that. So, right. you know, it's like anything. Do your, you know, do your diligence uh, and uh, kind of do some work and make sure that those that you, you're giving to um, are, are really doing what they're saying they're doing. I love the big ones. I love the multinational organization, you know, totally. charity organizations. Totally. You know, because they do a great work. They can do things that, you know, small organizations can't. But I also love the upstarts, you know, those that have grassroots too, because they have that relational capital. Yeah, they're grinding. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, they're putting, they're putting it in. Yeah. And that was part of the, the thought behind Enbridge originally too, was like, you know, 135 different places, you know, some of them $20 a month, some of them $100 a month, some of them $5 a month, like, but there was no continuity to it, yeah. right? It was just like randomly oh let's give to this let's give to that there was it was a very shotgun approach to giving and it was maybe giving to give and so you know the beautiful thing about Enbridge is that you really came in and streamlined that process really streamlined the give back process and I think we've got you know what is it maybe 10 organizations or 12 organizations that we really focus on hardcore that would be our you call it our pillar foundations. Yeah, we call them our, our noble causes. Our noble causes, yep. And exactly. then we have probably that many more um, where we do projects. Yeah. They know that, you know, we might be able to help them, uh, you know, do something special. Like one of the organizations that we give to is a Native American camp, but they needed pillows and pillowcases. Right. Yeah, simple thing, but, you know, they wanted to be able to to give um, a brand new nice pillow to each of the kids that came to camp. And so we ordered, uh, I think it was 40 pillows and pillowcases. Hmm. And you know, these kids, very practical. They went to camp, they had a great time at camp, but they went home with some pillow, pillows and pillowcases. Yeah, that's cool. 
We cool. also help that same group out with some firewood, right? In the winter time, didn't we do? Yeah, we help them out with fire firewood. We actually Indians, help them out. Traps. One of the things that uh, we did, which was again unusual, is we bought them um, some telescopes. Right. And they are in big sky country in Montana. Yep. And uh, one of the things we thought is, you know what? What a way to inspire kids by giving them some some telescopes and let them go out at night and look up at the stars and just kind of expand their world and say, wow, there's more out there. So Let them dream with no strings attached. Let them dream with no strings attached. Great way to say it. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty so cool. Fun. So we do projects as well. Yeah. So the projects are fun. You know, you know, we, a lot of these organizations, you know, we do a daily, uh, we do a monthly give just to keep them moving forward, but then yeah. we do the projects. So yeah, that's the way you can give. Do you have so, a favorite organization? I love them all because they have such great stories. I mean, yeah, I love, I love He Uganda. I love Marked. I love, you know, all of the organizations that we give to. I love them. Yeah. I think I really like Dawson's Place. I think that's one of my top ones. Yeah. Dawson Place. Yeah. Not uh, that's a that's a Snohomish County uh, organization that does a great job um, with a tragic situation of children that are that are abused, abused. Yeah. yeah, violently and sexually. Yeah, and they do an amazing job. Yeah, they see over eleven hundred children a year. Yeah, and they say that's about twenty five percent of the kids that are affected just in that county. Yeah, and they're a very unique place because. They have, you know, the team of, you know, uh, medical experts. They have the team of, you know, psychologists and support staff. And then on the, the second courts. floor, yeah. they've got the, you know, the team of prosecutors. Yeah. And on the third floor, they've got uh, the team of sheriffs. Yeah. And it's really quite unique because if something happens to a child, they go into the room, they only tell the story one time. Yeah. And they've got everybody there and they've got these amazing dogs that come and sit and hang out with the kids while they're telling the story and kind of calm them down. But they tell the story that, you know, you'll just be walking through the halls and you'll find some detective or some prosecutor laying on the floor with the dog. Because <laughs> those people also see, like, the worst atrocities yeah. day in and day out. Yeah. And so those therapy dogs don't just help the children, but they help the people who are in there working. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't great. think I could do that every day. No. I don't think I could live with... No. That... That's uh, a calling. Like, that's just tough. Yeah. You just see that much brokenness and that... I mean, how do you even keep going? Yeah. That's and right. so those people are amazing, right? And a lot of the people who are there, they're there year after year. You don't see turnover. Yeah. Right? They are committed to the cause. And so, you know, our goal is to be a champion sponsor for that organization. And, uh, and it's something that, I, that I'm proud of yeah. and that I think So what's your goal difference. for Embridge? I mean, you helped start Embridge and, you know, we hope to team with lots of different businesses in the yeah. area. But what's, you know, as far as Trans Blue and Evergreen Brands? My goal is, my goal is simple. It's $100 million a year into charity. That your that's big, the goal. That's, that's your BHAG. My, that's my BHAG. That's my hashtag Jim Collins. That's my big, that's my BHAG. We were talking about him yesterday. Jim Collins and really putting that out there. And you know what? We may never hit that goal. That's the truth. We may never hit that. But it's out there. And it's real. And, you know, the thing about it is that it's all about changing the world. Yeah. That's what I love about what we're talking about. And as we continue to grow this, you know, it'd be great to have you know, guests and partners and some of the amazing places that we share with on, you know, our little show and chat, uh, chat about what they're doing and what they're giving. But yeah, that's my goal. That's my heart is to, uh, is to do that. When I was a kid growing up, I always wanted to do something great. And I always related doing something great with, you know, being a movie star or, you know, being the next Bradley Cooper, <laughs> except he don't look as good as I do, especially on camera, especially on camera. But you know, but really doing something great. Maybe you, maybe you're a sports star. Maybe you're whatever it is. That's kind of my, what my idea of greatness was. Was like you know those people that you see in everyday life, right? And uh, in reality, what happened was I never was a center fielder for the Boston Red Sox. I never, 
made an acting career. I'm not a musician. So, like, I got You're a pretty good hockey 20. player, I'm though. a pretty good hockey player, though. <laughs> and I can fight pretty good, too. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, you know, I was in my 20s, and it was like, I'm never going to do anything good. I'm never going to do anything great. And I had to, like, think about this. And the truth was, when I started the business, was we started in landscaping. And I was super depressed about being a landscaper. I hated to tell people I was a landscaper. I was ashamed to tell people I was a landscaper. <laughs> For all you landscapers out me. there. That's how I felt. I didn't take pride in it. It was a means to make work and make money and be successful. But I felt like people looked down on me for being that, right? I didn't feel like, you know, it was as cool as maybe some of the other jobs. And when, to, you know, Dave's first question was, why is it that crown jewel? And it was like, well, God's, you know, blessed me with some ability to do okay at business. And so because of that, like, we can have an impact on the community around us. And if you're in the community, but nobody knows you're in the community, or if your business were gone tomorrow and nobody missed you, what would be the point of being in business? Yeah. And I realized over time that this is the path that God has laid out for me. This is the path that I'm on. And to be perfectly honest, I'm proud of who I am today. I'm proud that a portion proud of, of you, my Dave. business, thank you, <laughs> is landscaping. I'm proud of that right now. But a lot of that has to do with what I feel is doing something great is giving back to the community, yeah. is giving to places like Dawson Place, like Next Steps Pregnancy Clinic, like Lifehouse Ministries, you know, like the folks up in Nepal. And, you know, when you are having a bad day or when things don't go right, and, you know, the thing is, I, I like I think about business, is you can start out the morning in an awesome mood. You can get terrible news at 10 o'clock. You can have extravagant news at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And right before you walk in the door, you can get bad news again. Yeah. And you can live this emotional roller coaster in business, and it can be really taxing and it can be really tolling. And, you know, you watch so many people and, you know, you watch so many people who start a business and it doesn't succeed, start a business and it fails, start a bit, you know, and you hear that story. But I think that the key to success for any business is one, for me, I believe you put God first, but two, you put that money first, yeah. you know, and you, and then God says, give him the first of everything. First fruits. The first. So that's the first of my morning. That's the first of my money or his money. Cause it's not even mine. And I learned that lesson. And I'll just tell you this quick story is when I started my landscaping business, I got to do pretty well. I was doing well in the third year of business. I was doing over $3 million a year in revenue. Now, that's pretty cool for being in business only three years. Especially since my first year, I only did $70,000. So I was at this point where I was, you know, five or six years in, and I had a couple of houses, and I had some cars, and I really thought that I was, you know, doing Making something it. special. Yeah. yeah. I thought maybe a little too highly of myself. And I happened to be going into a 7-Eleven. I told you this story, and I seen this little penny on the ground. And I was like, I'm too rich to pick up that penny. I'm not picking up that penny. And I felt like God told me, hey, man, every penny is a gift for me. You better pick that up. And I didn't. I ignored that little voice in my head. And a few weeks later, I was at another store, and I'm going in and, you know, see another penny on the ground. I wouldn't pick it up. <laughs> a little stubborn, huh? A little stubborn. And I felt like the Lord told me, you are going to learn the value of everything. Hmm. And within nine months, within nine months, this is no joke, I didn't sell a single job for nine months. And I, and I like to think I'm pretty good at sales, but I didn't <laughs> sell nothing. And that's how I know that everything I do has nothing to do with me. And... Within nine months, I was filing a reformation bankruptcy. When I was taking my girlfriend out to dinner for her birthday, I was literally in the piggy bank counting pennies for hours to take pennies and quarters and nickels and dimes to the bank. And I didn't even take them to the machine at the Safeway because they take 6%. <laughs> but I needed that 6%. And, 
you know, grabbed those and took her out to dinner. And I had to file this reformation back, which is the most depressing moment of my life. Most depressing. Thought about suicide many times. Had hundreds of bill collectors coming after me. Had $2.2 million in trucks that was taken away from me. I didn't even want to, I didn't even want to get out of bed. And it was the most depressing time of my life. And, and, and I committed when I reformed, and I think it was to give 200 bucks a week hmm. to the, to church. And for a first year, I didn't even pay myself. Hmm. I couldn't pay myself coming out of this. And I remember coming home and my, to my house and I had no power. Hmm. And I had to call my mom and have my mom pay my power bill. And I was so mad. I drove through the lawn that I worked so hard to manicure because I was upset that I didn't have any power. But even through that entire time, I never wavered on making uh, you know, good on that commitment to the Lord of giving. And ever since then, you know, it's not saying that every day is good, but that's the joy. Yeah. My joy is in the giving. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you this. If you see me at the airport and I dive underneath one of those things that racks the luggage through security, that's because somebody dropped a penny. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. If somebody glues a penny to a park bench, I'll sit out there with a chisel and chip that thing off of there. But I also teach my kids, pick up that penny. And every time they see a penny, they will fight for it too. And you know what the first thing they say is? What? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And that's basically, man, like my whole belief in success. That's my whole mission in moving forward. And that's why I love Enbridge. Because while, the, I, while Enbridge is relatively new, you know, as a, as a nonprofit, three years old, whatever it is, two years, three years old, whatever, you know, that has been my heart since 2009 when I went through that atrocity yeah you can never outgive god man you, you never can you never can outgive god you give god the first fruits and somehow he makes he makes the rest more than what you have and he does you know yeah you, you try to hold on to it slips through your fingers he does but when you open up your hands like this man it's like the gives, blessings are he gives you more he does i love that he does love it so Dave. that's our that's our that's why we're here that's why we're here Right, Enbridge, we're here to change the world. Yeah. So, you know, change the world with us. I'm yeah. on LinkedIn. Check me out. Dave Westcott on LinkedIn. David Westcott on LinkedIn. Yeah, or Enbridge. Dave Lenquist on LinkedIn yeah. and on Enbridge. Check us out. Hit us up. We're happy to chat anytime. And uh, our, our big, hairy, audacious goal, the crazy goal, is $100 million a year into charity. And that's not $100 million all at once. That's $100 million into charity yeah. that we are focused in Stay getting. tuned. <laughs> it is. So we'll be back next week. Thanks for joining in. It's been an awesome time on Change the World. Thanks, Dave, for joining me. It's yeah. been an awesome day. Great. Thanks, Dave. You're welcome.